This video will introduce the characteristics approach to product differentiation. The characteristics approach treats goods as being made up of various characteristics and the consumer's valuation for a good is an aggregate of the valuations of those characteristics. Now there are different types of characteristics. There are what are called vertical characteristics and horizontal characteristics. So vertical characteristics, these are quality characteristics, are those attributes for which consumers agree on the ranking. So there's some objective ranking, there's a higher quality and a lower quality. Everyone prefers a higher quality. There are also horizontal characteristics, and these are attributes where people disagree on the ranking. So there's no objective ranking. So for example, the sweetness of cereal. Some people might like sweeter cereal, other people might like less sweet cereal. Probably everyone has a certain sweetness they like and that can differ between people. So as an example, let's think about cars. So what are the vertical characteristics of cars? So one quite obvious one which applies to lots of goods is durability. Everyone likes their car to last longer. Fuel efficiency. People would prefer to save money on fuel. The emissions level. Generally people prefer that their car emits fewer emissions or at least they don't care about it. I'm not sure anyone would prefer higher emissions. There's the power to weight ratio, or the presence of features, so air conditioning. So people prefer a car to have air conditioning than not. At least they prefer that it is installed. I mean, they don't have to use it. What about horizontal characteristics? So an obvious one here too is color. So people have different favorite colors. We have manual versus automatics, we have the type of transmission. Some people prefer manual, some people prefer automatic. We have the shape or styling. So there's no objective measure of styling. Some people prefer one type of styling, some people prefer another. The size, it might be some people prefer a smaller car. They might live in a city where there's not much room. They prefer a smaller car because it's easier to maneuver. Some people might prefer a larger car because they need a lot of space. One could argue here that everyone prefers a car that's bigger inside, but smaller outside. But since that's not possible, I guess, we can think here of a size as a horizontal characteristic. So you might want to think of some other examples. So now we're going to look at an example of applying the characteristics approach. Here we're going to show that even if all the characteristics are vertical, the good itself can be horizontally differentiated. That is, people can disagree about which good is best. The basic idea here is that consumers can value different characteristics differently. So although they all prefer more of these characteristics, because these goods have these characteristics in different proportions, the overall value for the goods can differ between consumers and in fact, one might get a higher value from good A and the other a higher value from good B. So in the example, we're gonna look at breakfast cereals and these goods we're gonna be thinking of as made up of two characteristics, sweetness and crunch. So the level of sweetness is measured by S and the level of crunch is measured by C. So in the diagram here, we have S sweetness along the horizontal axis and C along the vertical axis, the crunch. The two cereals are cornflakes and Fruit Loops. And here I've assumed that the level of sweetness for cornflakes is one, and the level of crunch is five. Whereas for Fruit Loops, the level of sweetness is four, and the level of crunch is two. Now, although I know that Fruit Loops is sweeter than cornflakes, I couldn't say much about their relative crunchiness, so this may or may not be accurate. So in the table here, below the diagram, we have two buyers, A and B, and we have their willingness to pay for each characteristic. So buyer A is willing to pay one unit of the currency per unit of sweetness, and they're willing to pay two per unit of crunch, whereas buyer B is around the other way. They're willing to pay two per unit of sweetness and one per unit of crunch. So they have different valuations for the degree of sweetness and crunch, but 
Both of them prefer more sweetness and both of them prefer more crunch. So what are they willing to pay for the cereals? So we just add up their willingness to pay for the sweetness and the crunch characteristics. So we just add up S plus 2C and here we have 2S plus C. This is their willingness to pay for a cereal of sweetness S and crunch C. So what are these two buyers willing to pay for the cornflakes and the Fruit Loops? Well, we can just substitute in the values of sweetness and crunch here for each of the cereals into the willingness to pay for each of the buyers. So for buyer A, they have a willingness to pay of one, that's the degree of sweetness for cornflakes, plus two times the degree of crunch, which is five, giving 11. And the rest we fill in in the same way. And we see there that buyer A prefers the cornflakes to the Fruit Loops, whereas buyer B prefers the Fruit Loops to the cornflakes. So A and B differ in their rankings of the two cereals. So although these goods are made up of purely vertical characteristics, because they have them in different quantities, and because the consumers value the characteristics differently, these goods are horizontally differentiated. There's no objective ranking of these cereals by consumers. So we can extend this characteristics approach to goods made up of many characteristics. So we can extend it to the case of n characteristics. So we can describe any good using a vector. So each of these here represents the quantity of a given characteristic. So C1 is the quantity of characteristic one up to CN, which is the quantity of characteristic N. So we might assume that the consumer's valuation for the good they're willing to pay is equal to a weighted sum of all these characteristics. So beta one here is just a number. It's a coefficient on the quantity of characteristic one. The larger is beta one, the more an extra unit of that characteristic C1 will affect the valuation. Now for vertical characteristics, where everyone agrees on the ranking, beta j here is going to be non-negative for all consumers. They all prefer more of the characteristic. We can always measure the characteristic in a way that more is better. If it's the other way around, we can always just redefine the characteristic. So for example, if it's emissions, everyone prefers lower emissions, we can just define the characteristic as an absence of emissions. Now horizontal characteristics are characteristics where there's no objective ranking. So it could be that more of something is better, it could be that more of something is worse. So the sign of B to J might differ between people. Also, we might want to allow for different functional forms here. So for example, we might want to capture the idea that someone has a sweet spot and therefore there's a point where more is going to make things worse and the point where less is going to make things worse. So as an example of how we can apply this characteristics approach, there's a paper from 1995 where they estimate the distributions of the willingness to pay for various car characteristics. So in this table, we have four characteristics of a car and we have the average willingness to pay for those characteristics and the standard deviation for the distribution of willingness to pay for the characteristics. So here in the table, an asterisk indicates statistical significance. So for an average, it means that the value is statistically significantly different from zero. Whereas for a standard deviation, it says that the standard deviation is significantly different from zero. That is, there is some spread in the distribution of willingness to pay. So let's look at some of these values. So we can see for the power to weight ratio and the fuel efficiency, these values are not statistically significantly different from zero. However, for the air conditioning and the size, these are statistically significant. This means air conditioning has a statistically significant effect on the willingness to pay for a car. And it's 1.521. So the valuations are measured in thousands of dollars here. So this means that consumers on average are willing to pay $1,521 dollars for air conditioning. It's not that easy to interpret this size coefficient because it's measuring the car in terms of the length times the width. But we can think about 
this coefficient in relation to this coefficient, and we see that the coefficient here for air conditioning is 0.44 times the coefficient for size. That means that having air conditioning is worth as much as an additional 0.44 units of size, which is about the difference between a small and a medium sized car. So people are willing to pay on average the same amount extra for air conditioning as they would for upgrading the size of a car from a small to a medium size. Now on the right here, we can see that three of these have a star. So for three of these, there's a significant variance in their willingness to pay. For air conditioning, everyone is quite similar. So we can apply this characteristics approach to any sort of good, and we can try to get estimates of what people are willing to pay for certain types of characteristic. And if you're a firm, you'd be quite interested in this information. You could try and design a car in this example, or another sort of good to maximize the willingness to pay of the average consumer or of a certain type of consumer.